Welcome to Intune Training, the Stephen Adam Show, but without Stephen Adam. So, guys, what are we going to talk about on today's episode of Graph 101? I believe we're talking about filters today. Is that right, Sean? Yeah, I think so. We were going to talk a little bit more about Graph Explorer and uh, really dive in and show what we can do, you know, return specific info, you know, talk a little bit about filters, maybe show off a select statement or two. I don't I don't really know. But we're just going to get in there and see how far we go. Sweet. Well, let's all pop over and see what that looks like then. Uh, oh, that's not the kind of filter we're talking about, Jake. Yeah, not no. those. What are these? No, that one's too big. I no, that's big. I mean, this one. This one's even bigger than that one. You're reminding um, me that my thermostat keeps telling me I need to change my filter. <laughs> yeah, every every four months, I think. I think I'm going on about six. I definitely need to do the same. But in all seriousness, we're back over in Graph Explorer here. Um, and last episode, you know, we did just a get on basic information like me, uh, Jake yeah. Shackleford. Um, and we discovered that I had let myself go on my driver's license photo. Yeah. But today, if we head down over to user, we can get, you know, some specific, you know, information. Um, if we want to look at, I mean, what do, what do we think, guys? I think there's one for like all users in the org. Yeah, let's get all of the users in the organization. So you'll notice if I click all users in the organization, we're still on V1 on graph, and we're just going to query the user endpoint. We're going to go ahead and hit query, or run query, and we get all this relevant information. You know, all the users. We got Adam, Adam test, Adam test two. Adam, there's a lot of Adams. There's a lot of Adams. For someone who I haven't seen in a long time, right? he's got yeah. a big footprint. Very big footprint. That's for Only sure. like two Bens. And one Jake. <laughs> yeah, a little crazy. Um, but, you know, maybe we want to filter um, on one specific user within that endpoint. Um, you got kind of an example, Johannes or Sean, on how we can do that? Yeah. Are, are you familiar with querying at all inside of Graph? I am a little bit, but I'd love some guidance. Yes, I would love some guidance. So I don't need PowerShell, but never in this. At a really basic level, you know, when we're doing any sort of query, which that's what both filter and select statements are, we're going to just start by adding a question mark here to the end of users. And then we're going to type in here, it's auto completing for us. But if we wanted to filter, we would just do dollar sign filter equals. And now what do we want to find? I think UPN is usually one of the big ones when we're looking for individual people. What do you guys think? Yeah, definitely. If we want to find a specific one, so let's type in user principal name. And now, is this stuff case sensitive? Yes, API calls you should always treat as case sensitive. Graph is usually pretty good about it, but okay. there are some things it may yell at us about. Never hurts to be too particular in this case. So we've Go got ahead. that. And I'm now, assuming we want you know some kind of like equals less than greater than. Something along those lines. Exactly. Now, this is where this is going to get weird. Remember how we were talking about how the URI looks just like a web address? Mm -hmm. And what can't you put in web addresses? Spaces. 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 So put a space in here, which you yeah. already did. And now we're going to, since we want something that equals something specific, put in an EQ and Got then it. put in another space. And then gotcha. when we want to search for a specific query, go ahead and put in the um, put in the string in single quotes that we want to search for. Yeah, using spaces just feels weird. Doesn't it? I think that's all we need, right? That that should do it. That should return Adam at Intune.training. You want to run the query. No, the sure enough. Look at that. Are. Look at that. Got we some have an Adam. Information. Now, there's also some other interesting things that we get, um, not just about Atom, but we also have this code snippets section, which will actually show us how we can potentially run that exact query in a couple different languages. Yeah. Uh, defaults to C Sharp. Most of us are probably going to be pretty interested on the PowerShell side of things. Yep. Um, it looks like they're showing it uh, to us via using the graph module. Um, we'll definitely dive into this in a later episode to show you how to do this without using the graph module and just straight PowerShell uh, with some good old invoke web request options, different things like that. Um, but just I have a short qu question. Uh, 
Notice yes. in the uh, graph query with PowerShell, it adds a plus rather than a space. Mm -hmm. Good eyes there. Yeah. I'm wondering what's that, what that's all about. I don't that, think I've ever had to use that before, though. The few times I've had to use Graph in PowerShell. I can't say it's something that I've had to use myself either. I don't oh, think I've trying. run into that either, but I, I'm sure if we had, if we were looking at it by adding the pluses in there, is it not, does PowerShell treat that as a space in a string? In this particular case, I think it might. Somewhere. Yeah, because normally yeah. if it were something where we were concerned about the spaces and so we would have to pass it in, that's where we'd have to put in, you know, like the percent 20 to account for the space. Yeah. So that's a really good question, Johannes. That is. Um, and again, we will definitely dive into it a little bit later <laughs> on. <in another laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Not to, not to brush it off for now, but we really want to get, you know, you familiar with just basic browsing to start, and then eventually doing just regular graph calls or API calls without the module. So you can eventually go and use other APIs aside from graph specifically. But I think that's going to wrap up this episode, unless anyone else has anything they'd like to add. No, unless you wanted to uh, briefly talk about selecting specific items since we're here. Hey, by all means, lead the yeah. way. So. Let's just say, because you had all those different users that you were being returned, uh, go ahead and take off our, our query here. So just return the user's endpoint one more time. And we've got a lot of different items showing up. Let's just say we want to say see who we have and what their user principal names are, since we had a lot of users. Ooh, OK. OK. So let's replace last time we used question mark and a uh, dollar sign filter. Let's do question mark dollar sign select. And then type in an equals. And let's get the display name. And type in a comma. And let's get the user principal name. Gotta love the auto. That's neat. So yeah. you could just use a comma to separate them. I That is pretty good. Yeah. And let's go ahead and see what that gives us. A lot more filter down information. So now, especially when you start talking about all of the different things that that you can do, and when you when especially when you're talking about working inside of Azure Automation or something that's going to be consumption based and be based partially on you know the amount of data that you're returning, by filtering this down, you, you can make those results a lot smaller and just get what you need to get, and only have to process what you need to return. So. Um, whenever you're talking about filtering, I think it's also good to talk about select statements just so you can start to narrow that down a little bit. And that PowerShell command is pretty straightforward as well. That's nice stuff. Anything else we can think of, guys? I Love think that's episode, episode, I think. All right, awesome. Well, with that, obviously, questions, comments, concerns, throw them down in the bottom. Or if you want to tell us how strings work in PowerShell, that's cool, too. Yeah, right, with the yeah. pluses. <laughs> and with that, have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, guys.